All right. Awesome. I think that started. Okay. So, hi. My name is Peyton of the Youth Advisory Board and the Children's Science Center. <laughs> I am a longtime volunteer and a junior at McLean High School, and I'm here today to introduce you to Angela Wilson, who has joined our STEM Changing Series. Angela Wilson is the CEO of CECON, a leading force in the intersection of technology and healthcare. With a passion for innovation and community engagement, Angela is dedicated to fostering a dynamic ecosystem that contributes significantly to the advancement of STEM initiatives. The STEM Champion Interview Series highlights a diverse STEM community and the journey STEM champions have taken, allowing children and young adults to see what is achievable. During our conversation, Dr. Wilson will discuss her background and career, as well as insights on the future of the health and tech care industries. Welcome, Angela. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Before we discuss your journey today, um, I'd like to know about your current role at CECON. Can you describe your responsibilities as a CEO? Sure. So... As the CEO of SACON, my role really is about strategic leadership, guiding the organization, coming up with a vision around, you know, how we can help um, the health environment, the industry, and um, coming up with some operational oversight, helping our organization to um, continuously improve. I think that is the key point for us. Um, we go after certifications that allow us to uh to constantly look at how we're doing business. Um, talent development, uh, making sure that I'm bringing on the right leadership team and that they are um, empowered to hire the right kinds of resources, making sure that we are hiring for talent. Um, and we focus heavily on that. And I think that's what contributes to our organization being extremely diverse. Um, and so we're very proud of that's awesome. And overall decision making. <laughs> yeah. What kind of qualities do you look for people in those leadership positions? Um, you know, we are looking for people that, um, to be, to be perfectly honest with you, I think what has made us very successful, we have a role called the Chief Happiness Officer. Oh my goodness. And, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody wants his job. <laughs> um, but his role is to ensure that he identifies with everyone that's on board. And again, when you're in a highly technical field, um, you tend to have people that are across the spectrum of personalities, um, many of which like dealing with a computer more than they may like dealing with people. And being in the health IT industry, our job is to make patient care easier and better. So thinking about the user and the patient and being in touch with, with people is our primary goal, right? And so... This individual goes around and ensures that we connect on a regular basis with our people, our talent, our experts, gauging who they are. We do personality assessments to help people to understand how they react, how they behave, how they can enhance that, how they can, you know, change that if they want to. Um, and so we spend a lot of time and energy on that. So we create a role that focuses on that particular character of our business. Right. That's definitely very important. And you mentioned yeah. your chief happiness officer. Um, what does his role kind of look like in the company? His role, you know, so again, in a technology company where we've got a CI, a, a chief technology officer, we've got a chief operating officer, we've got a financial officer. Um, again, we believe that because we focus on people, um, we needed someone that was really in, in tune to that. So he goes around to all of our locations. We're, we're nationwide. Um, we have people that travel the world and, uh, you know, he can talk, he, he does all of our surveys to make sure that people are, you know, happy with their jobs, that they're still fulfilled. Um, we are very involved in the community. So we touch base with all the communities within the U.S. that our people are engaged in. Um, we look at uh, the, building their talent, too. I mean, we're in what we call communities of interest, meaning you know, when we're in a technology field, um, technology is so broad that we've got a group of folks that only focus on the data aspect of technology. And so we want to make sure that we're constantly learning about that environment, getting better, able to share stories and cases related to various customers. And so again, you know, he sort of brings all of that together. He is sort of a, the, um, I like to call it the glue in the company that keeps us all very cohesive. That's really awesome. So I noticed that you said you surveyed um, 
the people that you employ and see how they're satisfied with their job? Do you ever survey your customers or your patients? We do. Actually, we do quarterly surveys with our customers. Um, we we meet with our customers on a regular. You know, and our business is a very high-touch industry, um, especially with what we do, which is more, focused more on government contracting. And so we focus on the large health programs that serve all the citizens. Um, and so when that, with that being said, um, we're constantly uh, interacting with government customers that understand what their goals and objectives are and, uh, and all of the regulations that they need to follow and the budgetary constraints and all the things that go into actually our government working properly. We have to be engaged on a regular basis to navigate um, all those aspects of, of IT. And so especially when it comes to a very hot topic in IT, which is cybersecurity, um, which has been, you know, very, very, very intense over the last 10, 15 years. And every aspect of what we do um, has a component of cybersecurity. And so again, being actively engaged with our customers is part of our daily, you know, activities. Right. Yeah, that's super important. So what inspired you to go into tech and healthcare? Because um, I know you got your PhD from Virginia Tech in education. That's why you're a doctor. Um, <laughs> but now you're kind of moving to the different doctor. And you know what I mean? It's kind of fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. You know, I always tell people that um, I didn't find technology. Technology found me. Um, my goal in life was to um, change education in America. That's why I went and I did what I did. I got my degrees and uh, I was really heavily focused. That's near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm, I'm very, very um, passionate about education. Um, the challenge, the, the, no, there wasn't a challenge there. There's still a challenge there, but that is not a challenge that we are tackling right now. But as far as IT, you know, I took a, a course. It was just on a whim. And of course, you know, when I was younger, um, technology wasn't as prevalent. And so it was, a, hey, you know, we've got this new thing going on. Um, it's called programming. Um, why don't you sign up for a course? And I'm like, okay, let me take a course. And that course just ended up, I ended up being good at it. It was something I was good at. I enjoyed it. It came naturally to me. It, it just, it, it aligned with the way that I, that I think. And so what ended up happening is what I became good at became my livelihood. And I am, I become very passionate about it, but it did not go because I was, you know, seven years old at my table thinking, I want to go into IT because it wasn't even an opportunity. I didn't even know it was available. Um, and so, you know, that is really how I got into it. It, it sort of fell in my lap. Um, and then, you know, doors started opening that I decided to continue to walk through um, and, you know, navigated my way to where I am today. Right, for sure. Because now that technology is so prevalent, some people start from a young age thinking, oh, I want to be um, doing data science when I'm older. I want to be a data scientist. But it might have been different um, when you were growing up. You wanted to go into education, right? Is that what you wanted to do? Yep. yep. Right. You wanted to exactly. go into education, but you didn't have as many opportunities in technology as we do nowadays, right? Exactly. For exactly. people um, interested in pursuing technology, what would you give them as advice? How should they start building their career? Well, you know, I would I would say the same thing that that I learned, which is don't um, don't put blinders on. Don't be so narrowly focused on what it is today that is your passion, because technology, especially in technology, it's changing so fast that you can't even conceive where it's going in the next few years. Um, so you you know the 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 great opportunity for technology for people that are interested in technology and it really fits in the way that they think today is that the building blocks are there. And so as long as you're constantly staying curious, you are you know, energized by learning and, and navigating the pathways of where technology is going, I think that you, know, you will end up in technology in the place that you're supposed to be at the time of you know, where it is at that time. Um, with, with artificial intelligence and quantum, I mean, the technology is just all over the place. I mean, there are so many opportunities in any direction. And the other great news about this is that, you know, when I was thinking about education, I could have really done some things 
from a technology perspective, it was available. And so I could have really combined my passions. And so the other advice I would give is that allow your passion to be your passion. And so if your passion isn't is in fashion, great. You know, you have, might be great at technology, but you can combine those now because now the landscape allows you to merge those two passions together. And so, you know, there's a lot more opportunities if you are if you allow yourself to sort of navigate and learn and be curious about where technology is going. Yeah, increasingly fields are becoming intersected totally. Yes. Um, I can speak from personal experience that, you know, as a student in education, you know what I mean? Um, everything is so digital now. Yeah. Undeniably, every student who learns is introduced to technology. So there's totally, you know, an intersection there. Um, but for you in your career, you have healthcare and you have technology. How does that intersection work for SECON? Well, you know, the interesting thing about um, health and technology, I went into, when I started doing technology, um, you know, I knew I wanted to make an impact. And so we were doing little this is and that, trying to understand how to navigate. Um, healthcare just came up as one of those things that happened in my life. You know, I had an exposure with a loved one that was expo that went through a health crisis. And unfortunately, um, when I saw how um, healthcare system worked, it, uh, it compelled me to try to understand how technology can help influence healthcare. Uh, and so uh, then I started pursuing opportunities within a healthcare arena for technology, and that happened to be in the federal space. Uh, and uh, that's the way that you can make larger scale impacts. Um, and, uh, and so that's what we ended up doing. We started pursuing opportunities in the health environment and looking at ways that we could advance healthcare using technical tools um and that's where that sort of that you know birthed into this opportunity to support the government using you know help help it right um so with both technology and i guess healthcare as well what do you see as any upcoming problems or obstacles that you might face um as the ceo of your company because obviously companies undergo so many changes and with something as uh, transformative as technology, obviously it's susceptible to change, right? So I'm assuming right. there will definitely be things that come up. So what might those be? So um, so I look at that internally to our company and externally to our customers. Um, there's two, you know, two different opportunities to, to look at the challenges, right? And so internally, um, we are constantly needing to um, enhance our talent development. Um, what ends up happening, and, and most uh, most individuals that get into technology, um, you start in your career, you start doing something, and that's where you stay. And if you're really, really good at it, organizations don't necessarily want you to change because you're so good at it, they want you to do that thing all the time. And so we're challenging ourselves to say, okay, Jane is so good at that, but Jane is going to stay in that role if we don't introduce her to new environments, if we don't introduce her to new challenges, if we don't introduce her to new technologies. Jane is happy doing what she's doing at She's not really interested in being introduced into new environments, right? And so we have to create plans of action to do that. And um, and that's hard to do when you're when you're in the business that we're in. Um, we're a consulting firm. We go out and we help government customers um, tackle problems. We're sending in experts. They happen to fall in love with Jane, and they want Jane to help them with that problem for the next three years. And so again, that's a challenge for Jane because Jane doesn't get to grow and develop and learn about these new technologies that actually might be able to help that customer more. And so we create these um, talent development plans. We are constantly working on that. That is very hard. That is a big challenge for us. Um, we haven't perfected it yet, but we are constantly working on that. So that's our internal challenge. Um, our external challenge with our customers is that technology changes so rapidly and um, and now I think that um, 
the changes are coming so fast that the government, at least our customer base, which is the government, they can't um, absorb the changes and and interoperate within the environment as fast as a commercial entity. So a commercial entity is like, you know, I, I want to change that. Or everybody in the company is going to change how that that's done. We can't really do that. That's harder to do in the government with the, within an IT environment. They have a lot of systems that have been around for a long time. And so... Um, so that's where we see what we call interoperability of all of the information, all the data, um, all of the systems together as they become more powerful. You want them to interoperate. And um, that is going to be a challenge to come. That is going to be a challenge for up and comers that are interested in that understanding about how, you know, you know, looking at big data, quantum, all of these other AI as opportunities to understand that better. And um, and you know help the technology environment um, to become cleaner. When I say cleaner, with the data, making sure the information is clean, beating out all the stuff that doesn't belong, um, more secure. You know, security is is going to get harder. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. Um, and then um, and then being able to interoperate amongst different industries, not just health, but being able to. In- Interoperate with education and interoperate with other environmental things. So allowing all the industries to actually merge is going to be the big challenge. Right. So it seems like you want to try and expand, incorporate all these different ideas and concepts right into where you guys are, right? Yeah. That's definitely, that's definitely something difficult because um, it's very tempting to stay comfortable where you are, or maybe you don't even know how to move on to that next step, right? Exactly. Yes. Um, another question that I have for you is about college, because I know in a year I'm going to be going to college. There's a lot of people um, in the Youth Advisory Board for the Science Center who are going to be going to college soon. It's definitely a whole whirlwind. Um, and you've been through a lot of education. What do you have to say to um, upcoming students of college? Um. <clears throat> Asking somebody whose passion is education. So, <laughs> um, so I have to I have to throw that out there. Um, I think college is um, is different now, um, and the reasons why you go to college is a little bit different than it used to be. And I think that's going to evolve. And I think that now um, we're only on the that's a, we're at the beginning of seeing that evolution, and and that's my own personal perspective, right? Um, but th- when I talk to my 19 year old, and just he's a freshman in college, um, and she's the baby, and I've got three others that are, you know, gone through the process, um, and I've seen it change, evolve from my 31 year old down to the, my 19 year old, is that you know I see her the role of college now is not just don't focus just you shouldn't focus solely on the academic aspect of college. Um, you should go in looking at what your interests are, trying to get, you know, focus on a degree that represents that interest. Um, But the first couple of years really, you know, are about networking, you know, finding what I like to call your tribe, finding people that are like-minded, people that, um, that, that you can have conversations with and explore ideas with, Um, you know, be, explore diverse opportunities. I mean, don't, you know, go with the norm of, you know, I want to go into IT and that's it, you know, take a class in fashion, take a class in, you know, you, you should really explore opportunities to learn about different things. My daughter's taking a dance class. I mean, she's a dancer, but it's like, I got to break out of going. She's looking at it as we're taking high school all over again, you know, the first couple of years. So again, take those, take that opportunity to, to add some diversity to your, to your course load. Um, and then self-advocate. I mean, I think right now is a time to really stand up for um, getting the value out of education that you expect. And I think that um, your generation has an opportunity because you've been exposed to technology. You've been exposed to learning in all aspects of your life. I mean, it's not like you went to school to learn. You learn all the time, every day, something new you know, and you're and you're very quick at absorbing what you learn and then moving on. And so 
make sure that you're self-advocating. You're you're getting what you believe is going to be valuable to you out of the educational environment. And again, going in there, you're like, well, it's very intimidating. I got to apply and I got to get accepted and then I got to go in and, you know, what is this large environment? Um, but, you know, just, you know, go in, not just about the academic. It's not just about the academic. You will get the learning. You will get the academics. But there's all these other things that that should be learned in, in college and to include communication, social awareness, all those other things that you can get outside of district class. So that would be my my suggestion. And the other part of it is whether you're taking a class on the side or you're doing a master's or you, you've got to find a way to find the specialized courses for what you want to do. It's not going to be in the undergrad, you know, um, and it's it's going to be outside of that. And so that might mean summer class oh, yeah. X, Y, Z. That might mean and continue to be involved in STEM and deciding that you're going to teach a course on quantum and learning about it and teaching it. Um, or it's going to that professor and say, I'm very interested in this topic. This is very new. It's up and coming. It's a, it's a convergence between these two topics that I'm interested in. Can I learn about it? And can I help? Can I co-teach? You know, can I, can I teach a class on that? So again, all of those things are going to contribute to you understanding where technology is going and navigating your pathway um, to get to where you want and not just relying on the education, the academics to get you there. Right. There's so many different aspects of college. Um, I remember I went on a college tour. I went on so many, but I remember one specifically. I went to, I think it was Northeastern up in Boston. Uh -huh. um, they have like hundreds of clubs, hundreds of clubs. Um, so anything that you're interested, if they don't carry like a class with it, would you recommend that people invest in clubs or what should they do like an online course like you did? What do you think is the best way to go about pursuing extra interests? Um, you know, I love the idea of clubs um, because first of all, it could get you um, networked or connected with people that you wouldn't otherwise meet. Um, and I think that most colleges are very open to if we don't offer it and you have an idea and you can get two or three people together, you know, we'll start advertising it. And and there's a way to, to create new clubs. But, you know, I like that idea a lot. And but I also like the idea of teaching. Teaching is the best way to learn. I know that's a weird uh, thought, but if you are being tasked with teaching something, that is the absolute best way to learn it. And I think that, um, you know, even co-teaching, going in with someone else and trying to teach other people, because that conversation that happens in the room when you are actually, teachers aren't experts on topics. They know how to facilitate a conversation about a topic, and then they end up learning more, and then they incorporate that into their next conversation, or they bring in experts that can talk on things. But I think that um, those are other ways to learn. And then you know, creating, doing exactly what you're doing right now, but going into corporations that are doing it that are near the campus or that have an affiliation with the campus and doing an interview. It doesn't have to be connected to anything. You've got all the questions. And and learning from individuals, mentors, don't be afraid to ask for a mentor. Um, and, you know, those are some of the things that I would do. I like your view on that social aspect. I think networking is definitely very important. A lot of people talk about like the, oh, like you want to do this for the college experience, like go to parties and stuff. But it's also really important to get like deep social bonds that go beyond just meeting someone at an event and then not seeing them again. Building that yep. tie so you can continue to see them at other places and maybe, I don't know, go out for lunch sometime and talk about an opportunity that you see. Yes, exactly. That's definitely very important in college. I agree. So that's a good piece of advice for sure. Thank you on that. Um. So for your company and your industry in particular, just moving away from that college talk, um, <laughs> <laughs> what excites you about it and what kind of issues or, well, not issues because we touched on that, but what concerns you about your industry and what excites you? Um, what excites me in, in general about technology, I mean, I just get I'm very passionate about leveraging technical tools to make things better. And so... I think that we have a lot of opportunity um, to make health care better um, and because there's just there's so much need for it. Um, our population is getting older and healthcare is not just for the older folks. I mean, it is for 
younger people are more interested in their wellness. And so if we can start having those communications at a very young age about wellness and what wellness means, um, you know, we are able to get better outcomes. And so, you know, I, we're just excited that there's a lot of tools now that make people more comfortable with communicating. There's websites that you can go to to start interacting about wellness. Um, there's a big consciousness around um, wellness. And so um, we see those as all great opportunities uh, for health IT to influence that. Um, you know, I think the hard part is that we don't want to boil the ocean. You know, and there's so much that can be done. Um, and I think most technology people that are passionate about it um, are so excited when you hear a topic and you're like, oh, that's super exciting. <laughs> um, you tend to, you know, go all, but you got to sort of pick your space and say, this is really where I want to go a little deeper on. And I want to understand how we can tie this together. Um, and so that's really the challenge is not getting, you know, these new technologies are happening all the time. Not all of them are going to pan out. Not all of them are good for your industry. What are the ones that can help you picking those out, go in deep, see how it works, and then move on. And so that's where we're trying to, you know, iterate on what works, what doesn't, what our customers are looking at, what they will not, throw those out, keep moving. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so I just have one last kind of quick general question. What other pieces of advice do you have for um, aspiring pre-college students of my generation? Um, I think my big thing is um, be willing to evolve. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of pressure to know who you are and what you want to be. And it's so unrealistic. I mean, it really is. Now, there are some people that just know. I mean, they're just.